Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another malicious compliance Reddit video. In our first story, don't fix the servers. Uh, sure. Can I have that in writing, please? Let's jump right in. So this happened to me a few years ago, when people were allowed to roam throughout the vast city streets without a mask. I am one of the three co-owners of a local tech company, which also provided tech support. Now, one of our big time clients was an office for whom we had deployed three to four servers and provided special tech support as they were one of our OG clients. Now, the storage servers that we deployed in the firm were old. They had started to wear down and started to get slow. So we suggested to replace them with new, more reliable and faster ones. And the owner, a very douchebag of a dude, decided to wait till the weekend, as they had a very huge and crucial project going on, and he didn't want any time wasted as they were near the deadline, a week or so left. He told us to get the new servers ready to go, basically put together the new servers and install the software, etc, etc, so that we could just go ahead and swap the servers and use the remaining time to check for errors, transport the necessary files for ongoing projects from the old servers to the new ones, and all such stuff. Now, the office had an employee who would look after and approve any and all repairs related with the servers. We too had to get his approval for any repairs related to the servers, unless we had the direct consent from the owner. Our cast today is me, the above employee, Elliot, and the owner. So around four to five days before the new servers were to be deployed, we went and did our routine checkups on the servers. We do routine checkups on old servers if the owner or buyer asks us to do so. Well, we found a major issue with the servers that could lead them to crash hard, hard, like not being able to work again hard. So like anyone would do, we wanted to resolve the issue. Luckily, it was nothing we hadn't seen. In fact, we predicted that it may occur and would only take an hour's worth of downtime. So we sent an email to Elliot that contained all the details of the issue and asked for approval for us to resolve the repairs. Elliot flat out within seconds responded with a big no. We sent an email again, asking if he was sure and gave more details about the issue and how all the servers may crash if the issue wasn't resolved. He again responded with a no. So I called the owner, and he said to do as Elliot said. When I told him that Elliot said no, he said, then don't do it. I asked that he give that to me in writing. He said okay, and around 10 minutes later, we got an email stating the conversation I had with him. So we left it at that. The next day, we get a frantic call from the office saying that the servers had crashed, how they were behind schedule, and how they could not do any work, and how it was our job to make sure there were no issues in the servers, and how we were to pay for their losses. I then calmly told them that we had in fact told them about the issue. We had told them how serious the issue was, how the servers may not work anymore, and finally that they now had to wait till the weekend for the new servers to be deployed as they were not completed yet. The owner went insane and said that we hadn't told them about the issue, but when I sent him the email chain between us and Elliot and his own email account, he shut up and knew he couldn't do anything. He asked us to hurry up with the new servers and then hung up. The next weekend, we deployed their new servers. The best part is what would have cost them only an hour of downtime and repairs ended up costing them four days of downtime and possibly a lot of money as they were late to finish their important project. And yeah, Elliot was probably canned because I never saw or heard from him ever again. The next time we went in to do repairs, I arrived to find a new, more awesome employee running the show. Story number two, don't engineer solutions. Back when Compaq made laptops with two and a half inch mechanical hard drives, they came out with a model where if bumped even a little a certain way, it would dislodge the hard drive from its connector. The result would be a call to Help Desk that the hard drive had failed. Help Desk would route the equipment to the depot repair section. At this time, I was the Help Desk manager, which was also over depot repair. 
One genius tech came up with the idea to wedge a bit of folded paper behind the drive to keep it in place, and so I had all the tech start doing this any time we touched that model. The IT director received somehow the chief operating officer, his boss's laptop, on which the hard drive had failed, really failed, as she had dropped it while the hard drive was spinning. Upon taking the cover off, I have no idea why he did that, he discovered the folded bit of paper. The IT director made the trip down the elevator to my office with equipment in hand, thrust it on my desk in front of me, and demanded to know what was going on with that. I explained. No, that's unacceptable. If Compaq had this fatal flaw, they needed to fix it. My team needs to not be engineering solutions, especially such a shade tree solution. Send any that fail back to the manufacturer. I explained several issues that would come up with that, the primary of which was at the time a two to three week turnaround. But no, no more tinkering. Send them to Compaq to be fixed properly. Cue malicious compliance. I explained the issue to the depot techs and they all got the hint. Every second computer that came in for anything started going to Compaq for repairs. Quicker than I thought, though probably three to four weeks, complaints were flowing into me, the IT director, and even the chief operating officer about slow turnaround and no equipment. I was summoned to her office and found myself under a bus made by a very angry IT director in the other chair. What's going on? demanded the chief operating officer after methodically explaining that the company needs PCs to be working. You think? I explained that we are no longer allowed to engineer solutions to compact issues, so we have to send many of our machines to the manufacturer now. I went on to explain how I like to let the techs use initiative, with oversight, but not anymore as it's not a proper fix if we do it ourselves, per the IT director's order. This is a directive from him and we're just following orders. Stammering ensued from the other chair. I was thanked and excused by the chief operating officer. The IT director came to my office later and apologized for interference with my leadership. He was gone within the year, and that was my next promotion. Story number three. Follow the scanner? Okay, boss. For background, I used to work at a car manufacturer whose name rhymes with Wanda. My job was to pick up trains of carts full of parts from the warehouse with a motorized cart puller, take them to a section of the assembly line, and take the empty carts back to the warehouse to be refilled. There were about 20 of us doing this job, all on a different route. The way the factory was set up created a narrow path that only a single train could fit through at a time. This bottleneck was shared by three routes, which made it nearly impossible to complete Route 10, the furthest in a timely manner. We had scanners that told us exactly which train of carts to pick up next and which empty carts to collect. Here's the story. As you may have gathered by now, Route 10 was not popular with us worker bees. If you followed the scanner, you would regularly fall behind while you waited for the bottleneck to clear. The solution us worker bees came up with? We combined a couple of small trains to reduce the number of trips we needed to make, saving us time and allowing us to keep up with the deliveries. All was good until management clued into what we were doing. We were told that the scanner tells you what to do. We don't pay you to think, follow the scanner. I happened to be assigned Route 10 right after we got chewed out, so I thought, okay, I'll follow the damn scanner. I watched as the amount of reserve parts at the line dwindled. Did I care? Nope. I was following my scanner. By the time management noticed, my route was down to less than five reserve parts at the line. These are used at a rate of one per minute. Did I care? Nope. I was still happily following my scanner. It took three managers helping out to get Route 10 back up to an acceptable state by the end of the shift. And when they asked me what went wrong, I said, I don't know, boss. I was just following my scanner. The fallout was that the company investigated the layout of the routes and did some reorganization to avoid the bottleneck. 
It took a couple of months, but Route 10 was finally fixed. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe. I would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.